Michael, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. What brings you to IQE 2016? We're sponsoring actually uh, one of the sessions. It's um, a, hi a highly important event and actually been, uh, we're extremely uh, happy with the attendance of more than 900 people from around the world. It's, uh, it's, it's what we hoped for in terms of our presence at a, a, an event of this stature and um, uh, some very key players here. What is it that you do? We're um, primarily uh, a sort of cross between a risk management consultancy and an insurance broker. So uh, we end up, m for most of our clients, placing insurance policies for them. But as part of that process, we try and engage rather before that, um, helping them understand contractual uh, risks, con um, both with their counterparties in contracts and through leases and through finance agreements where applicable. Uh, so trying to um, help them negotiate some of those and help perform to them down the line as well as uh, a more generalised uh, engagement with a risk review process, not just insurable risks, but that's, that's probably our main meat and drink, but we, we also help um, work through other, other sides of the, the non-standard insurance risks such as weather delay, uh, is, uh, is an area we're um, keenly promoting uh, in the sense of understanding risk in the first place, even if there's no insurance about it, um, insurance product uh, bought as a result of it. But um, yes, a more general engagement from our, our experience. We're, we are insurance brokers, but we, um, as a team, have a background working with clients and or uh, consulting engineers. So uh, we have a hopefully a broader understanding of the challenges that the industry faces. And we try and create solutions and help clients understand how to interact perhaps with some of the counterparties that they're going to have to face down the line. Are there any particular nuances to this sector? Uh, a lot of nuances to this sector. As soon as you start trying to build anything at sea, you create some interesting uh, engineering challenges, obviously, um, but relating that to what can go wrong, the sea can throw all sorts of things actually, both on top and below. So, uh, yes, uh, and we're, almost every project presents some new uh, angles that aren't quite uh, quite the same as the market, the insurance markets seen before. Um, there, there are clearly a number of prototypes which have have variations. Uh, on, on themes, but they're almost always just slightly different in terms of the risks presented by the time you synthesize it down to the, the boring grey men in the city like myself and how to, how to work through things. So uh, uh, yes, hugely, hugely challenging in many senses, but um, manageable and what we try and do is actually educate the insurers well in advance of uh, some of these um, heavier risks, more, more exposed projects uh, coming in so they know what's going on, who's doing what, what uh, third party verification into the methodology and, uh, and prior contractor experience, for instance, and so on and so forth. We try and lead them by the, by the nose and, um, uh, yes, broaden the knowledge base so that hopefully there's a door half open rather than half closed when it comes to actually talking about nitty gritty stuff like insurance. And so, it's challenging but fascinating at the same time, I think. What are the main concerns in the risk register? <laughs> uh, I, the risk registers we've helped um, work through and look at tend to be pretty lengthy and they tend, as they should be, to be um, moving feasts. So they evolve rapidly through time and the, um, the most pressing risks at any one stage of the project uh, are often things that you wouldn't necessarily imagine six months beforehand. So uh, I think the, uh, yeah, the, there's, there's all sorts of engineering challenges. I think for me, um, and it, it does depend on the technology, but in some of the uh, big tidal projects, I think some of the areas around vessel types, um, times of year to schedule your, your project uh, and, and contractor experience, those throw up all manner of risks around it in terms of potential uh, potential costs and potential risks in terms of uh, 
just by definition, sometimes we will be doing operations uh, that have not actually been tried before in quite the same environment, which is a, by definition a higher energy, uh, either tidal or wave, wave environment that therefore can, particularly on the tidal side, can present some real challenges. You have to, you have to do stuff in a, in a 30 minute uh, slack tide window and that, that's not very long for some of the more detailed, um, more, more complex lifting, drilling and other operations. So working out safe ways of doing that is, uh, is very key, fundamental. I think that's probably the, the biggest area of our, our concern. There's plenty of others I know. But. As the industry evolves, will that risk register become um, less of a prototype? Yeah, um, and I think it already is. Um, it's becoming an industry. It's becoming... Uh, we're allowed now really to start talking about putting machines rather than prototypes in the water. We're allowed to... We can demonstrate that some of the vessels have done similar operations in two or three other projects already and some of the contractors have developed significant experience about how to how to do certain types of operations in certain conditions so so it's already it, there's there's still plenty of challenges and each site will have its own particular nuances no doubt but um, it's already becoming uh, something where Hopefully, with a bit of forethought, we can we can create the picture that the clients understand what they're doing, the contractors they're engaged with understand what they're doing, and yes, that might be slightly different, but it's been looked over by somebody else who's seen all sorts of similar things in the past, and he he agrees that's the right way to do it. So you you it's it's moving away from the unknown into into a, a serial kind of deployment phase that you could look at as kind of starting to be, um, yeah, homogenized, scary word, but uh, yeah, starting to be repeatable and um, easier to understand. Fascinating. And what will you take away from the conference? Uh, at, at the highest level, I think it's, it's been very upbeat. I think the, um, the level of confidence around the sector is generally good. There's obviously been a couple of well-publicized uh, corporate failures of late, which is very sad, but I think people have absorbed those and worked out that it is not the end of uh, the wave and tidal sector. Um, by contrast, you'll see, obviously, that there are, uh, the tidal sectors at a slightly different phase of development, at least for some of the, the big turbines and big projects, but you're seeing a level of maturity, so it's becoming there about the project developers and the projects rather than about the technology. And, and that, to me, is a good sign. With the wave, wave sector's got a little way to go to get to that stage, but the building blocks are starting to be in place. There's a huge amount of work being done across the industry by the um, Ocean Energy Forum, for instance, to try and uh, create that mo roadmap to help the EU understand what, what else they could do to... Uh, uh, ease some of the roadblocks in our way, be it consenting or particularly finance, which is more the area that uh, I, I'm, I'm most concerned with. But th th there is progress and there is positivity and I think we have a, a, a very exciting future to look forward to for the next few years. Nothing's going to be certain and it might be some different players than you imagine, but uh, it's, it's making good headway. Michael, that was fascinating. Thank you very much for your time. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.